So we tried turning this bad boy over and nothing happened. We didn't even feel like a stutter of any type. So um, <clears throat> that brings me back to whether or not we're getting a spark. I have not tested for spark yet. Uh, that's something that I need two people for because I need somebody to turn the key while I hold the spark plug and ground it and see if it's actually sparking. But I will say that I think there are problems with the ignition system other than just the ignition coil. Obviously the spark plugs are new. The plug wires don't look too bad. Um, so I, and the distributor cap doesn't look too bad. I took that off and checked underneath it. So I'm thinking that my biggest problem here is going to be either the ignition coil or the wiring uh, of the actual um, skid steer. The wiring on the skid steer is brittle and falling apart all over the place. So I kind of need to replace that anyway. What I decided I was going to do is just go ahead and um, fix the wiring on the skid steer. And then after that's fixed and Shauna has time, we'll come out and we'll, we'll test it for spark. If we're getting spark and uh, we've fixed the power going to it and the spark is hot, my the next thing I'll probably look at is uh, the firing order of the spark plug wires, make sure that they are uh, firing correctly uh, to the manufacturer uh, specs. Uh, if that is working, then that carburetor that we cleaned, I'll probably try and go back and uh, replace that carburetor. But that's about $150 part, so I don't want to do that unless I'm absolutely sure that the carburetor is what's wrong with this. I don't think it's the carburetor because I'm not getting any firing at all. And if it is a carburetor, I should be able to spray some starter fluid in there and uh, see something happen. So at this point, we're gonna start with the wiring. Uh, if, if the wiring doesn't get it to spark, we'll go to the ignition coil and we'll work our way into the motor from uh, basically from the ignition key back to those spark plugs. In, in order to properly get to the wiring on this, we're gonna have to uh, unbolt the seat and then just kind of rock it forward a little bit so that I can get to all of the uh, wiring that is, it's actually wired underneath the seat and it wires to this front panel here. But because of how tight it is to work in here, the best thing it looks to me to do is to, there's a, this, the seat is all bolted down to a panel. There's four bolts here. If I undo those, I think I can just kind of rock the seat, tilt it forward, and then I can get to all the wiring a lot easier than I could trying to reach my hands in. That's when a mistake could be made. So I want to make it as easy as possible to get to the wiring of this uh, skid steer. undone I should be able to just pull this seat out of here what I'm actually trying to do is just tilt it up so I can get it out of the way these are gonna be a problem if that might be tilted up enough I can figure out a way to get it to stay but here we go it's coming yeah nicely done now I can get in here to where the wires are and uh, really just replace everything, get it nicely cleaned up and get rid of those brittle wires that aren't doing us any good. You can also see all sorts of different parts in here of the skid steer. See the hydraulic pump down there, which doesn't look that old, but you never really know. It's covered in oil, so it could be really old and it just looked good. With once clean it off. That's weird. Oh. We might end up needing to get a new hydraulic pump. Some of this stuff in here just looks like it's it's been leaking some fluid for some time. So we'll get it running, 
see what happens. Those hydraulic pumps are a couple hundred dollars a piece. So I am going to start this project by replacing our largest wire, uh, which runs to the, the that's the, the entire power to the system. When you're doing a project like this, you want to make sure that you're using a wire that has a uh, gas and oil, gasoline and oil resistance rating. It'll say it on the wire. The wires that appear to be the worst are actually the wires that I think are supposed to run down to the solenoid. Um, so I'm trying to pull those out. And we've got, wow. That's our problem right there. Come on, I'll pull this out and show you. When I pulled it apart, it looks like the wires have completely melted on this wire harness. And that's probably why we're not getting any power down here. Um, so we're going to look at how this is wired up here. Okay, so I just pulled this whole thing out of here. Um, put the screws somewhere safe. Hold it in place. There just appear to be a lot of issues. This is this is really bad. It's not working at all. I don't even know what happened in there, but. This is our battery cable. So we'll go ahead and remove that. And on the same side as the battery cable, we have this orange cable, I haven't identified where that runs yet. Um, we have a smaller ground wire under there. This one is, is one of the ones that's really bad. It's barely even attached just by a few strands and it's completely uh, messed up all the way down, almost completely burnt out. I wonder if that was even the right size. The amazing south wire screwdriver that's labeled S, the small ground. Oh, there's a washer on there. Get that in safe place. This wire doesn't appear to be bad yet, but it has been burnt further on down the line. I'm going to disconnect it. It goes to some, a part underneath the motor. I don't know what that is. I'm assuming that it is the starter which we know works. So I'm not even gonna mess with that wire. And this is the wire that I've determined to be so bad. Just such a pitiful wire. So we pull this apart, well, you'll see what I'm talking about. I think I found something that my fancy screwdriver doesn't wanna fit. battery starter that ground little tiny ground wire and then this is the really messed up wire right here frost from the S I'm partly repeating that so I can remember where these wires go after I take this thing apart it also has the smallest most difficult little bolt just because I don't have a fitting that works for it this is, I, I'm assuming this is our solenoid, which I believe works because it was clicking over. This is a mess. We've got this wire which goes into the um, uh, 
this red wire connects to our starter here, it, well, through a regulator and, or a rectifier of some sort. And we've got another power wire that goes underneath. I don't know where that goes either, so I'm going to leave that be for now. I need to take this completely apart so that I can figure out, figure out where all these wires go and just start replacing the bad ones for all of them at this point. Somebody's been doing work to this thing. It's got a lot of electrical tape on it. really messed up wire which has a green sleeve down here but it attaches to our black wire up top here. The red attaches to our orange type wire and then this little green ground goes all the way through to the ground. So we'll get some wires and cut them in the same length as these, maybe a little longer to give ourselves some working room and then we'll uh, attach some fittings to them and just kind of rebuild this from where it is. So the main concept here is that I have a black, a red, and a green. And again, you want to make sure that you're using wire that is rated for automotive. It'll say it on the wire, gas and oil resistant. It's very important when you're doing this work. And you can see why from looking at these wires. I mean, these, these things will overheat. Cause a mess. I don't think I got my full roll of black. I think I got gypped by somebody. Let's start here. Tucking that down. I'm going to go a little longer than I need. There's our green. It's black. There's our black. Now we just need to attach our ring terminals, because I believe this had ring terminals on all ends. We'll double check. Yes, all of that, ah, the red has a different terminal on one end. So we'll just do ring terminals on everything except for that one. Now I'm using 12 gauge wire. Let's strip it on the 12. So I went ahead and replaced uh, the wires as they attach to this because I wanted to make sure that I got things going back into place before I forgot where they go. Um, the red wire is connected back to the solenoid. Okay, so this orange cord goes up and it attaches to the same spot as where our main power comes in from the, um, from the starter. From there, really not sure where it goes. It looks pretty bad. If I can fix this, I'm going to go ahead and replace the wire. 
didn't buy another connector this size that I'm aware of. So, this is going to pose a slight challenge for me. Okay, so I've got this put back together, I think the way I had it before. Um, the, the worst wire here was the ignition wire. Uh, it was just not even functioning, so I think I've solved our problem. I'm not going to tell you what I did there because it's really bad, but I did not have a, um, a terminal, right, terminal to put there, so I didn't even have the right electrical tape on hand. So this we just won't talk about, we'll pretend that's not there. It's important to know that when I'm working on this, there's no battery connected, because this is our battery cable, and um, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm touching metal and then I'm touching the hot, that could hurt. This goes down to our starter. We know that wire works because it was turning over. Um, so I actually think at this point, I may have fixed what our problem was on this. I'm going to go ahead and rewire these wires back up into our ignition system there. We got a nice wasp it's flying around right where I need to work. Uh, we have one more wire that I need to trace down and that wire I believe is a fan wire. It goes down behind the engine. This wire is also in bad shape so and the fan is kind of an important important thing. I, I, and I'm not sh even sure if, if a fan would have a motor. I, I don't know where that wire goes to, um, if it just goes down to the fuel pump or, or what. So I'm going to trace that wire down and uh, if it needs to be replaced, we'll replace it. Uh, the rest of this is ready to go, so we'll mount that back in. We're just trying to get this thing started right now. So. 